Uh, I look forward to a long list of haters after this goes on air. I'll be, I'll be You're being here. good company. <laughs> Don't worry. That's fine. Uh, I love you guys. You know, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus was not popular, and that's not why we're here. We're here to tell the truth, and you know, and sometimes truth are hard to hear. And, and, and you know, look at the cross. That wasn't easy. Hello and welcome to Belonging on Nashville Catholic Radio, the show for young Catholic adults. We're filming live here in the Diocese of Nashville at the Oscar Romero studio here at the Catholic Pastoral Center. My name is Zach Jansen. I'm joined by our co-host, Father Gervon, with the Diocese of Nashville. And this week we have Dr. C here with us to talk about the vaccine here, a very relevant topic, uh, a very divisive thing going on. Uh, but it's, it's good to be back here in the studio Back doing radio, we all feel so famous with all. There's all the cameras now. There's pictures being taken. Uh, anyways, Doctor C, thank you for being here today. We appreciate. It. Thank you for having me, Zach. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, you told me how you guys knew each other a little bit. I guess you uh, coerced him into Father Ryan. How the great education. <laughs> yes, uh, Bernie and his uh, son and daughter went to Father Ryan, and uh, both are graduates from Father Ryan College right now. But also. Uh, Bernie and his family really became good friends. And yeah. uh, when Bernie, a year ago, most of a year ago, part, he started to participate in the research for the Moderna vaccine, he said that they need some more subjects, uh, minority. So since I'm Latino, <laughs> I was considered a minority and I participated in the, in the uh, research of the vaccine uh, together. So. So what was that like? Was that last fall you were doing a lot of the research for it then? So I had heard from one of my partners at my office that he was trying to enroll in the Vanderbilt Moderna trial. Okay. And so I asked, well, how can I get into it? Because, you know, I want to be vaccinated. Yeah. I didn't have any reservation about it. And I had heard that one of my friends, um, Buddy, was running the trial, uh, someone that I knew from my undergraduate days at Vanderbilt. Sure. So I had a lot of trust uh, that he would not want to put somebody through something that was dangerous or uh, could cause me uh, a lot of harm. So I reached out and I was able to enroll. And then when I went to get my first injection, um, I asked if they needed any more volunteers. So I reached out to Father G because they wanted minorities. So oh, you, you, picked, I'm a minority. you picked a good yeah. one there. And you yeah. could give us a little background of where, where you're at now. And like you said, you're in Lebanon. Is that where you're working a lot currently? Yes, I'm a primary care physician in Lebanon in a group practice. Okay. I've been there almost 14 years. It'll be that uh, September 17th. And uh, it's been really good. I wear a lot of hats. Uh, do um, It used to be simply just a member of a group practice, but now I'm doing a lot of what I like to call side hustles. Yeah. So nursing homes, hospice. I'm one of the team doctors at the local university, Come Learn University. I supervise other uh, nurse practitioners and other practices in the area. Uh, so it's really grown. Uh, keeps me busy. I'm blessed to do it. Um, Absolutely. It, I love your Knights of Columbus shirt as well. Which parish are you at? So Is I'm it? a member at St. Francis Cabrini in mm. Lebanon. Yeah. And so, yes, I love my brothers there. I don't get to see them as much as I used to, but uh, I still pray for them all the time. And uh, I'm thankful. It's a big blessing to our family, just uh, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, and uh, even the insurance program. Yeah. Uh, I feel really confident that uh, we'll be covered now and in the future. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here. We're talked to, here to talk about, obviously, a, a very... I guess d divisive topic and uh, r really became political since I guess it became available to the, to the public and, and worldwide, really. It was interesting talking to you out, out in the lobby just about what the public thinks, what you see on social media, and even in person for you, what you hear from your patients. Like you said, that you've trusted for that have trusted you for over a decade, but for some reason, this one topic is kind of what's, what's splitting them. Well, can you go over some of those things you were listing earlier as far as what are the points of Maybe maybe making people stray as far as the information and whatnot. Well, I uh, when I go to clinic, about every day, multiple times a day, people are uh, skeptical about the vaccine for whatever reason. Um, earlier on, when the vaccine first came out, there was a contingent that was first in line, and they are very much on board. And then over the last six months, uh, you know, we ask our patients every time, have you had the COVID vaccine? Mm -hmm. And even from 12 and up now. And sometimes you get an enthusiast, yes, I've gotten my one dose or two dose vaccine. And then you have people know. 
they say no. And I say, well, why not? And they'll say, well, I just haven't. Or they'll say, I'm never getting it. And that's it. So Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a personal responsibility to engage in this discussion. I'm not a person that likes to um, engage in uh, emotional disagreements. Mm -hmm. But I guess during these last six months, I've really grown as a person to be able to face the line, so to speak. And so some people like to um, hear out what I have to say. And I've won over a few people, I believe, by the grace of God, that some people have won, you know, said, well, okay, Dr. C, I'm going to go get it Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And then there's just a contingency that just will not, will not do it. And I think it is multifactorial. I think sometimes it's misinformation and you know, there's lots of it on social media. I get most of my informa- uh, misinformation on social media sure. <laughs> and um, it's hard. What, what, what kind of misinformation did you find or did you find people getting to you? Well, uh, there is a whole list of things that people fire back at me as far as why they don't want to get it. Uh, one of the most recent things was the, um, there's a website that you can, um, respond if you had the vaccine, if you had an ill toward side effect, right? So I got a headache, I got a rash, I hurt really bad, I got a fever, nausea, vomiting, all these things are very common with um, these vaccines. If you've had it, you know that it happens. But so, is that, isn't that all the vaccines that you can have all those side effects? The, many of them will cause a lot of those things, yes. Okay. We, we take care of um, children, and adults so we give vaccines every day in our office and that is true and then they'll throw that at me says well look there's like 13,000 people here with all of these complaints chest pain shortness of breath blood clots um i grew a tail uh (laughs) i have new limbs whatever it is so uh I, i can't disprove every one of the things on that website that people complain about that aren't true except that i can say um that is misinformation. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been proven at least for the Pfizer Moderna here in the United States. I can't speak for the vaccines that are worldwide. I don't keep up with all of those, but I know that there are many of them Mm -hmm. that they've been proven safe and effective. And, um, you know, I tried to go back and forth with the patients, all of their concerns and tried to tell them how I feel about it. And at the end of the day, I tried to pull at their heartstrings a little bit. And from an emotional standpoint and just say, you know what, I've loved you for a long time. You know, me, I'm not trying to steer you you know, one direction or another, as far, I don't have any secondary gain. Mm -hmm. I don't sell these vaccines. I don't have any investment in it. I want you to be well. I want society to be well. I want the common good. So for me to be heated in a discussion with you about this vaccine uh, should mean something to you because you know, I'm not normally like this. So Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I have an obligation to do that, to kind of engage in a heated discussion with people, even though they don't want to listen. And it's exhausting sometimes, but it's just, I think it goes with anything in life that really matters. You know, you pick battle. This is a battle that, you know, if I'm going to wear the white coat, I need to be willing to make this battle, just like Father Javon here needs to be willing to do the spiritual battles with his his flock hmm. that he, that are uncomfortable. So you made a good point about for the, for the common good, which is essentially what the purpose of the vaccine is and wearing a mask, because it almost gets a little bit, I guess, would you say selfish in a way? Well, well I don't want to take it. I'm, I'm not going to get it. And if I do, it won't be that bad uh, a lot of me and my statements as long as I'm not affected I'm okay but can you speak more about that how it's, it's about yeah, and, other people and, and, and I think it's interesting because both Dr. C and I we got our first dose in September and the second dose in October so a little bit right that after that we knew that we were vaccinated we knew we, we knew that we have the antibodies but even though with that you know gave me a little bit more okay I know that I have the antibodies I know that I have the vaccine but then I still I stay wearing masks, you know, even though I knew that I was ready vaccinated, I knew that I have the antibodies, but it's not about me. And I think that maybe that's the problem of the issue is like, unfortunately, we, the way that we, you know, raise our kids and everything is like, it's all about me. Mm. Yeah. You know, and it is, unfortunately, it's not. So when we understand that it's not about me, yeah, I'm protected, but because First of all, you don't know that I already had the vaccine or whatnot. Now I decide to use this or to do this to protect you as well. I think part of the misinformation, too, and uh, a lack of understanding is this idea of herd immunity. Mm-hmm. Um, we, 
in the clinic try to explain these to people and some people grasp it and some people have a hard time with it. But the more of us that take the vaccine, the less likely that we as a society will have either contract it or have a severe outcome, even death from the virus. So you've seen this with the things we've been vaccinated before, uh, measles, mumps, diphtheria, polio. These are all things that were affecting us even before my time that would kill many people, fill up hospitals. Uh, if we all get on board and take this vaccine, we can almost eradicate this virus altogether, at least have people not go to the hospital for it. Mm -hmm. And I wish people would understand that more. People play the card that says, hey, well, look at all these people that have been vaccinated and they are still getting sick. Well. That could be true even if we get 100% vaccinated, but the percentage of those people who get hospitalized and die from the COVID-19 virus when they've been fully vaccinated are very, very small as compared to those who have not been vaccinated. Mm. Something to the degree of like 98, 99% of those who are dying are the unvaccinated. So as you get more and more people to get through that threshold and they kept all the fancy scientists do the calculations. If we have this much of replication of this virus, then we need say 80% or more people vaccinated to be able to get the hospital readmissions all you know, the level down. Um, the more we get on board, the better off as a, as a world and as a United States we'll be. Mm. So what, th what kind of symptoms did you have when you took the vaccine? So the first uh, dose of the Moderna vaccine, I know now me and Father Gene know because they unblinded us, but we went in knowing that we'd either get a placebo, probably a saltwater shot or the yep. real deal. <laughs> but I really felt within the first few hours that I got the real deal because my arm was sore. I felt tired, felt a little bit warm, but never had a fever. That only lasts for about one to two days. Then 28 days later, I had my second shot and I felt a little bit worse. I had a temperature approaching 100 degrees for a couple of days, very run down, couldn't have any get up and go for about four days. My arm hurt, I was achy, really tired. But after those four days, I was good to go again. And I know from a lot of my patients, they have a whole uh, list of symptoms that they suffer from, including nausea and vomiting, uh, fever as high as 100, 203, probably higher than that. But all of them have been self-limited, so, uh, I can tell people with confidence, I've not heard of anybody. Uh, my colleagues in the medical field who study COVID and the vaccines all their life every day tell me that from Pfizer and Moderna, they are not aware of anyone dying from it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I cannot emphasize enough that there isn't any studies that shown anyone to die from the vaccines, uh, Pfizer, Moderna, but there are plenty of people who are dying from COVID uh, yeah. every day. I have a lot of uh, dear patients that have died that shouldn't have. Uh, even in, in their 30s and 40s. Dr. C, what are, uh, a few one time we were talking about this and you say, how much does it cost a ICU room? Oh, so I don't know exactly about an ICU, but the average hospital admission is over $10,000. A day? Yes, it's a lot. For the ICU, it's probably even more than that per day. I think I heard something like 30 some, I, I, it's, it's It's a lot of money. It's quite wow. a bit of money. And so... Uh, I try to tell patients at the end of the day, it is really about the hospital. Because if you want to say, well, I have the freedom to get sick, that's well and good. If you get the strep throat, you're likely not to be hospitalized. So you can do what you want. If you want to go be around somebody who's got strep throat and kiss them and whatever, and you get strep throat, you can go get some penicillin and you probably won't go in the hospital. Have your way, right? But when you get COVID, your chances of being in the hospital are higher than something like strep throat. And when there are no hospital beds left, I'm not able to take care of you for your heart attack, your pneumonia, for your altered mental status, for your uh, bladder infection, your loved one who may be elderly who needs the hospital. You can't get a bed. If you go there, you're going to be in the hallways of the ER for a long time. Your loved ones aren't going to be able to come visit you. It's overrun. That is a reality. So um, I can understand people's right to be able to get sick and make a poor decision how they want to do it, but when it affects everyone else's ability to have access to the healthcare system, then we have a real problem. Yeah, I think you have nurses in the ICU constantly, especially over social media, giving their testimonies saying, I'm seeing this every day. If this you don't is, believe this it, this is real. I've it's seen happening. It yeah. Yes. And the other problem is that is really killing the morale of healthcare workers, especially that are in the front lines in the ICU, is 
really when it comes to that, once you get on the ventilator, your chances of survival are pretty low. And who wants to just go to work knowing that, well, my hands are tied. It's just going to be, uh, you know, everything's in God's hands, but we feel like we have some control that we could just buy this person some time and their body's going to recover. More likely than not, it's not going to be. And then you're dealing with families who can't get into the hospital, can't come visit, can't be with their loved ones. And you have people that are upside down on the bed, on a ventilator, sedated, not knowing what's going on. What a terrible way to die with mm-hmm. no one, no loved ones around you um, by yourself, uh, not being able to breathe. So and it's and then you run the risk of getting COVID yourself if you're a healthcare worker, hmm. and then you're understaffed because you can't get enough people to come back to work for various social reasons. They're burned out. They can work from home now. They find other jobs where they don't have to be in the front lines, exhausted, um, asked to work overtime. Uh, we're getting paid more from the government for whatever reason. Unemployment, having extra kids. Hmm. So. Um, it's a lot. So even if we have the beds, we don't have the amount of staff to work those beds. Mm-hmm. So, and they're becoming less and less to the point where they're taking care of people in tents, in the parking garages. Uh, it's a real concern. It's it's real. That that part of the strain on the healthcare system and the hospitals is very real. Um, and now we're just extended to kids. So who wants to see little three month, six month old babies with COVID? I've seen newborns with COVID. Um, they are now in the ICU and they're dying. And, wow. you know, who wants to do that, especially if it's because of a choice of their parents or their family that didn't want to be vaccinated and they get sick, so give it to their child, and then they have a poor outcome. How unfair does that sound? To me, it sounds very unfair, especially when we know as a scientific medical community that these vaccines work and would slow down the spread, including the masks. We, we are convinced that all of these measures, along with social distances, will bring the numbers down so that we can staff the hospital and mm-hmm. be able to take care of not only COVID patients, but all the rest of the people that need us. Yeah, and that's the other thing, because we have all the other patients that need the healthcare system that cannot have access. People who need elective surgeries or all that stuff that can't have access because the hospitals are full. Yes, uh, I have a lot of patients that come to my clinic who need the hospital for whatever reason that's not due to COVID and I send them there. They go to the ER and say, well, you don't have a bed. So they'll go home with chest pain, shortness of breath, a blood clot in their arm because they don't want to sit in the ER by themselves. Mm -hmm. They want to be with their family. They have to take care of their loved ones. Uh, It would be a bit easier if they could get a room quickly, have their family come visit them. Uh, And they are resistant to do that. And what's best for them is to be in the hospital and get the services and the treatment that they need. But um, because of that, they're getting suboptimal uh, suboptimal care. So you hear about that in the news a lot, how uh, we are not delivering a good product as a healthcare, uh, you know, as a, as a group of healthcare providers, we can't do a good job anymore because we're strained by COVID and we're understaffed and we're tired and we don't have the means. We don't have enough people to help. So it's really sad. We're here on Nashville Catholic Radio with Dr. C. And I think that's a big part of the, you said the, the misinformation of, pe- of people that at this point, it's just tough to change their minds as far as not only the mask, but also the vaccine. Uh, because they're finding the websites you're talking about, or maybe they don't see it in person just yet. It's not close enough to hit home of someone they know in the in the emergency room or the hospital bed. Where, where do people go to to be informed about um, why I should wear a mask? Even the vaccine, people are saying, well, it's it's not. It wasn't. How is it made this fast? Maybe an anti-vaxxer might say that is. How can we possibly have? I don't. I don't trust it. Where can people find the information to say this is something I should do? This is the best decision. For the, for the world's health. So I would say before that you would go to your pastor or to your health care provider, but even those people are not a slam dunk because some of those people are bought into some of that misinformation as well. Sure. So uh, as hard as it for people to trust, um, I go to the CDC website and mm-hmm. I follow their guidelines and I trust the people that are running those websites. I trust the people that are working there because I know a lot of them mm-hmm. and I know that they struggle to give the right information. And uh, some of the anti-vaxxer argument is that, that, that 
information changes so often I can't trust it. And it's I can't supposed trust to change. We just covering other stuff and it's supposed to change. <laughs> Absolutely. That's people a just don't understand. A, so a bad argument. It really is. So people just say it's always different and it's like science changes all the time. So I tell my patients all the time, you remember the medicine I put you on a, a, a decade ago? I put you on baby aspirin because you had high blood pressure. Well, now the recommendation is that you don't need to be on that. And we just found that out recently. So this changes. So I need to be up to date. I actually have a, I subscribe to an app called up to date so that it changes all the time. So I have to reference, you know, what is best for the patient on the daily because it is different. I get journal articles all the time sent to me synopsis that tells me, okay, what are the journal articles that are going to change my practice? And I get that every month. I read that, try to stay up to date because everything changes. That's the way it is. And we discover things about COVID all the time. But, um, well, why do I have to wear a mask now when they said I couldn't? Well, and we did before. Why'd I have to do that again? Well, we can go on and on about that, but the Delta virus is different. Mm -hmm. It is a stronger, easily, more easily contracted virus or uh, form of the COVID virus. And because we don't have anyone vaccinated yet, we have to wear the mask until we can get those people on board. Mm -hmm. So I, I urge you to trust that and then try to ask your trusted primary care provider who also buys into things like the CDC website and try to stay within their board certification uh, teachings, um, trying to go rogue. There's a lot of people that are trying to go rogue and, and, and tell people, this is my personal opinion. It's the same with Father G, right? So Father Gervon can't just go rogue and teach something that the Catholic Church doesn't teach. He can go to the catechism. He can go to his bishop. He can go to the Holy See to find out what the truth is. And he doesn't have to depend on himself. He knows those people are telling the truth. And so is my you know, governing board. They're trying to tell me the truth and I, I'm not going to go rogue. I'm going to tell you what I understand from all the people that spend all their days studying it. So I think it's interesting to think what, uh, what the church teaches to, uh, on the, the morality of this vaccine. I think, I don't, I don't know if they had a document released, maybe at the start of the year a long time ago about, uh, if, if it's morally right to receive it. Cause a lot of anti-vaxxers might say, well, am I getting aborted tissue in, by taking this vaccine? Because uh, it was that part, is it the, the, the testing of it, I guess, maybe the, the parts had to do with yeah, uh, aborted and, pieces. And and both the USCCB and the Vatican itself, they, you know, pretty much said, yes, this is morally acceptable yeah. to get the vaccine. You're not, you're not like connected with the evil. You're not like, th those abortions are like done. That, that was 50 years ago. Yeah. And, and the other thing about this is even if it, because like the Moderna one doesn't have any, connection with the border feed, uh, cells or mm -hmm. but even if they had because of the common good mm -hmm. that is morally acceptable like you it's like remotely associated with it but you're not exactly. you're not publicly saying i support this ab abortion that's the exactly. right thing to do if you have a choice then you can choose moderna or the pfizer mm -hmm. uh, are the j and j yeah. has some uh testing related to that one so if you have that available pfizer or moderna and you um, seeking your conscience to be free of that, then choose those two. But if you don't have a choice, then my understanding is the Catholic Church says yeah. that you are you are morally okay, okay. More okay to take that, even if you don't have. If you have the choice, that's what. If you have the choice, you should choose either Moderna or, or Pfizer because they they don't have any connection. If you don't have the choice, it's even if when you don't have the choice, it's okay to uh, mm -hmm. uh, get the Johnson Johnson. That's the one that you know. So, but the problem is a lot of times we have, we have people that want to be holier than the church, huh. you know, or, well, that's not my understanding. So, okay. Wow. You know, thank More you for, thank, my, yeah, my thank you. Yeah, because, and I think it goes around what we were talking about earlier. It's all about me. Mm. It's all about, everything evolves about around me. It's how I feel. It's how I, you know, it's, no, it's not. No, mm -hmm. right is right and wrong is wrong. So, yeah, it's, it's just crazy to see some of the arguments around. I just stopped watching to the news and it's yeah. just like, it's crazy because it's, you know, and and I think the worst part for us is like, I can't just agree with you without getting mad of you. Like, I think it was yesterday, the day before, last night or whatever, they had one of the uh, board, uh, school board meetings that people were like fighting and kicking each other. It's like, can we just talk as human beings? 
mm-hmm. that we can just disagree with each other and still talk? I've tried to reach out to the school board locally in my community, and they won't have me at the school board. They, I went the first round uh, back in March to try to urge Mads mandate. They know how I stand. I've reached out to the superintendent. We will come vaccine, you know, vaccinate all the high schoolers and anyone who's eligible. And he reached out to me and says, well, you're not, you know, Dr. C, I'm really on board with you. I'm really passionate about what you're saying. But my lawyers have told me, don't, we're not going to fight this one. Even mm-hmm. if you have a right to be able to uh, deliver a vaccine and let the uh, children 12 to 18 to authorize it, uh, we're not going to fight this battle. So I'm sorry we're trying to fight it within the school board, but and I'm with you, but it's just such a political, uh, it litigious so, yeah, thing. Yeah. So yeah. what can you say about like the point of view uh, that you really hinted on was that you d- don't tell me what to do. You can't, you can't tell me what so, to do. So, right. I, I'm no Father G. He probably has a different but the same perspective, yeah. whether he's talking to people about the faith or sure, even yeah. in confession. Absolutely. You, you can see, you can probably see when people are holding back or they want to hear, they want to hear what they want to hear. Uh, they get their misinformation because it, it lets me have the right to do what I want to do. And you can find that anywhere. Mm. Uh, and you tell people over social media or face to face that, you know, I, I'm not a smart man. I'll be honest with you. I'm not trying to be um, falsely hum- humble about it. But mm-hmm. my understanding is this, if you either have misinformation, the wrong information, you don't have enough information, you're scared about the vaccine. These are the only reasons that I think you know, that you could have to not do it. And then it boils down to just pride and being selfish Hmm. that you're not going to tell me what to do. And when you try to call people out on that, that's when they come out in arms and just say, you know, it's not about that. I've had these studies. I I can show you. And and in the medical field, we call this evidence-based medicine. So, you know, I've got this evidence, even though, you know, in the medical community, it doesn't have enough weight, enough strength to really be something that's valid. You can't have a person who's under undereducated and prove that to them that mm-hmm. what they're saying is wrong because they're just really convinced that they're right. And I'm sure father G gets this a lot of times when you bring up other controversial topics about that. It's really going to cramp my style and my life, the way I like to live. If I, you're going to tell me I can't do that. Well, so bye-bye Catholic church. I'm not yeah. going to be there anymore. Wow. And it's really sad. Um, you know, one of the most, the most deadly sin is pride, right? That we yeah. can't be told what to do. And, and it's just that part, I believe in, all these discussions I have every day just boils down to I'm just not going to. And it's really sad to see. Yeah, and it's funny because, like, yeah, we are told what to do all the time. You have to wear clothes to go to a grocery store. You know, you. Ha- I mean, there are so some social norms that you follow. You know, why do you, I mean, can you imagine? I'm not going to stop on the red light anymore. Now I'm going to stop on the green light. No, there is a norm. There is a procedure. There's, like, this is... The common sense is not common anymore. <laughs> That's you what know, they say. It's like, yeah, the, I mean, if you, I, I'm going to decide not to stop on the stop signs. You're going to get hurt. <laughs> you know? Wow. It is, I mean, yes. And it's like, and, and, and I think it's a misunderstanding. What is freedom? What is, you know, like, yes. I mean, even philosophy, you say your right finish when the other person's right start. What did JP2 say? Something about freedom is not be, to be able to do what you want, but the freedom is to do what you ought to do. Yeah. Right? That's yeah, that's, I mean, if you don't want to go to theology, it's just, you know, natural law. You don't kill people. That's yeah. wrong. And you don't need to explain that because you know that it's wrong. You, deep inside of yourself, you know that it is wrong. Mm-hmm. You don't do something that's natural law. And I feel like this issue is really if you choose not to vaccine and mask, then I, I am not doing a disservice because you're actually affecting everyone else and put their life at risk. Mm-hmm. And I hate to make it sound that dire, but it's it's real and it's true. So what can we do moving forward like, as Catholics and as Tennesseans as well, just for the for the common good, like to promote what we believe as far as the vaccine and mask? Is it just is, just keep doing what we're doing, I guess, and, and res- respecting other people that are maybe of a I different just, opinion? I just ask people to take whatever leap of faith they have to do. A mild inconvenience. I tell them, you know, love is sacrifice. I hear that all the time in the church. Love is sacrifice. Love is to will the good of the other. So if not for yourself, do it for other people. Do it out of love. The mask is a small sacrifice to make uh, for the good of everyone. And if you have questions about it, ask someone that is, you know, uh, your primary care provider that 
has the pro vaccine message because that's the truth. That's the true one. And if you need help, you can call Father G and I'll lead you to the right person. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, to find the truth, the reminder that love is a sacrifice and that freedom is to do what we ought to do and to find the common good. Uh, thank you, Dr. C, for being here today, for, for giving your opinion and your witness to the faith. Thank you for having me, Zach. Appreciate it. And thank you for everyone in our listening audience. We hope you felt uh, especially connected to this one. I know it's it's like we always say, it's it's a divisive divisive topic, um, but it's important to know what the church teaches. What is the truth? What does it mean to love someone else, to, to sacrifice, to make a small sacrifice, whether it be a mask, and promoting this is the common good of, of getting a vaccine. Uh, we hope you felt connected in some way to this. And remember, like he said, to look to the CDC, look to find the right information. Uh, so thank you. To, uh, you were saying? Yeah. Uh, I look forward to a long list of haters after this goes on air. I'll oh. be, I'll be You're being for. good company. <laughs> Don't worry. That's fine. Uh, I love you guys. You know, like, Jesus <laughs> Jesus was not popular, and that's not why we're here. We're here to tell the truth, and you know. And sometimes truth are hard to hear. And, and, and you know, look at the cross. That wasn't easy.